All right, guys, this is going to be the second video of the electronics series, and this one is going to focus on 2D sonar. So we're going to go over some examples, kind of all about 2D sonar, how it works, and then we'll get into some on-the-water examples. So starting off with how 2D sonar works, think of it kind of as a flashlight shining down for your boat. It's going to be in this cone shape. It's going to be the beam of your transducer. Whatever you drive over that ends up in this cone is going to be displayed on your graph. It's going to be sending out rapid signals from your transducer and it's going to be timing how long each of those takes to come back. And with that, it can also determine how hard or dense an object is. So if you're going over rocks, it's going to be a really strong return back, but if, say it hits off some fish or uh, wood, it's not going to be as strong a return because that object's not going to be basically bouncing that signal back to the transducer and there's as much strength. So it's going to be able to convey that to you on your graph by whatever color palette you select and they'll show you kind of how dense the object is. We'll get into that. It's measured in different frequencies. And here's the big kicker here. The higher the frequency, the smaller the cone. So as you can see at 200 kilohertz, you don't have as much area that you're scanning, but you're gonna have a higher detail. So we'll look in this a little bit more. The 50 kilohertz is around in the freshwater transducer game, but I feel like it's kind of marketed towards the saltwater people because they're scanning in really deep water. The lower frequency will travel further and it will help them out. Mostly focus on 83 and 200 kilohertz for freshwater. But the general rule of thumb is with 83 kilohertz, you're gonna have basically a one-to-one -one ratio of depth to bottom coverage. So pretend we are in 30 feet of water and we are in 83 kilohertz, the diameter of this circle here, what we're actually scanning at the bottom of our cone is going to be 30 feet. The 200 kilohertz is gonna have a smaller cone. It's usually about a three to one ratio. Say we're in 30 feet of water, the diameter of this circle is only going to be 10 feet. So you're gonna have a little bit of a trade off there. You're gonna have a smaller area, but you're gonna have better detail. For 83 kilohertz, you're gonna have a larger area, but you're gonna have less detail. So if you're just scanning around, you know, 83 is something good you're going to cover more water with. Find something, brush pile, fish, ledge, something specific, and you want to go back over it, you can change it to 200 kilohertz and then drive over it and get a little bit better detail. Now we'll get into what you're actually seeing and kind of helping you understand that. So we'll start off with how the 2D sonar is laid out. Your newest information is going to be on the right side of the screen. Your oldest information is going to be on the left. So as you're out on the water, this is constantly going to be scrolling from right to left. If you just keep your eye on the very right side of the screen, that is going to be the newest information, the newest data that's directly underneath your transducer at that second. So here is a group of fish. Here is a big ball of shad. Fish are generally going to show up as arches if you're moving and the fish are stationary. If you're sitting still though, they're going to show up as a line. I'll have an example of that here in just a moment. And here's what I was talking about with bottom hardness and return strength. It's indicated by color. So in this particular palette, Hummingbird gives you a nice little guide up here. This little bar right here is the color palette and all the way to the right is the hardest return and all the way on the left side is the softest return. So yellow is the hardest, purple is the softest. So you can see this is a very hard bottom here. These are some pretty sizable fish. I would guess they are probably bass. Stripers maybe, they could be walleye. And then, like I said, this is a ball of bait. The balls of bait are usually gonna be very dense and just thick like this. It's gonna look like a big cloud is kind of what I would call it. Here's a little example of why the fish show up as an arch as you are moving and the fish is stationary. So it's a little hard to see the letters here. This is A, this is B, this is C. So if your boat is traveling to the right side of the screen as indicated by the little arrow here, and this is your cone and this is your fish, it's gonna hit the fish first on A so this, it, pretend this is scrolled back over here. You're gonna see this part of the fish first where it's coming on that edge of the cone. And it's gonna have that little downward arch in there. And then as it gets into the very center of your cone, lined up here, you're gonna get the thickest part of the fish. It's gonna be flat because it's directly underneath your boat. So it's bouncing, coming straight back. And as you get to see, it's getting to the outer edge of the cone again. And that's why it's giving another little downward bend to the fish. So that's why they show up as an arch if the fish is sitting still and your boat's traveling over it. Now here's an example of some active fish underneath your boat as you're sitting still. So this is what I call spaghetti lines. It's just fish being active, coming in and out of the sonar cone, and it basically just draws lines all over the screen. But you can kind of look at this and see the history of what the fish was doing. This is something that reminds me of table rock, that spotted bass, you know, you're in 95 feet of water, but the fish are suspended from 20 feet to just say 40 feet. And you can kind of just see the history of the fish moving. Obviously, this is multiple fish in here, but you can kind of pick a line and, and follow it a little bit. So you can see a fish was up here pretty high, and then it's kind of working its way down a little bit. And then maybe in here, this almost looks like a little bit of a drop shot line, like somebody dropped a bait and sinker down right here. So this would be your sinker of drop shot. This would be your bait. Nice straight lines coming down, and then they're kind of jigging it through the fish and maybe working it back up. These really thick red lines are fish 
just kind of being active, just going up and down, schooling through, some are swooping down, coming back up and going about. And you can see on this particular color palette, it's a little bit different than the other one. Red is the strongest return and this light blue is the weakest return. So these nice thick red stripes are fish just suspended over open water. So talking about the different color palettes, there's a lot of variations, no matter what brand you have, if it's Humminbird, Garmin, Lowrance, choose whatever you prefer, whatever works well with your eyes. You can usually look at the top or the bottom of the image and figure out the return strength. It's gonna have the hardest return and it's going down to the weakest. So if this didn't have this bar, you can see red is the strongest and it goes, fades down into the light blue. And on this Lowrance palette here, you can see green is the strongest and then it goes the yellow, red, and then fades into the purplish colors. And like I was talking about earlier, the stronger returns on the bottom indicate a hard bottom. So you can see this is a nice hard bottom. And this particular color palette, I will get into a little bit, doesn't show the bottom hardness as easy. You can still see it. You can still distinguish it a little bit, but it's not gonna be quite as good as these to figure out if it's a harder bottom or not. And this is a specific Lorraine's palette. Now we'll talk about Chirp. If you buy a unit today, they're gonna advertise this. So 2D is notorious for being hard to distinguish what exactly you're looking at, especially when you start to get a lot of things in one area. If you're looking at fish suspended around trees or brush piles or rocks, or you have some sort of debris in the water, you know, an old dock that fell down or something, you just have all this stuff in one area, 2D sonar is not really good about separating it. That's where down imaging in conjunction with this kind of comes into play. We'll get into that in a later video. You can never be 100% sure when you had a lot of stuff in one area of what was what. So when Chirp Sonar came out for the regular fisherman, it kind of alleviated that a little bit. It's not perfect. It's an upgrade from what it was, but it's still not nearly as good as down imaging where you can kind of pick things apart. And the way it works essentially is instead of just picking one frequency, so instead of having 200 kilohertz, it's gonna send out signals in a range of kilohertz. So it may send out a signal from 180 to 230 kilohertz or something. I'm not 100% sure on the ranges it does exactly, but I know it's different frequencies and that helps get you the target separation. So in this little picture here, it's supposed to be the same thing that's been scanned over, one with regular 200 and one with high chirp. And you can see that this sticks up off the bottom a little bit more, but this is a little deceiving because this is actually zoomed in where this is not zoomed in. But just looking at this little bump here and here, you can see that this at least stands out a little bit more on the bottom. One thing to add is think of high chirp as your 200 kilohertz. You're gonna have that smaller cone diameter on the bottom, smaller scanning area. Whereas if you do a low or medium chirp, it's gonna be a little bit closer to the 83 kilohertz. Uh, so you're gonna have it closer to that one to one ratio. So here's a quick little setting guide. 2D sonar is not hard to set up. It's not hard to adjust and mess around with. This is just kind of some starting points if you're having trouble with it. So even with all this new forward facing sonar, I'm still utilizing 2D sonar when I'm drop shotting because you're not going to miss anything that's directly below you with 2D sonar. A fish can barely come up off the bottom and you're gonna notice it on here where it may be a little harder to see on your forward facing sonar. So when I'm drop shotting, I'm increasing my chart scroll speed. On the rants, you can bump that up to like two times, three times, four times. I'm usually running that on two times. So that's gonna make your screen scroll twice as fast. Essentially what that's gonna do is keep things updated as quickly as possible. And it's also gonna kind of draw things out a little bit. So instead of just being a very small little blip going at a small speed, it's gonna elongate that a little bit just so it's easier for me to see when I'm out on the water. With that, I'm also running my ping speed very high or all the way up on the transducer itself. And again, getting the most data. And then I run my sensitivity a touch high. I like to have even a little bit more clutter than this on the screen. I don't mind having a little bit of clutter on the screen. I'm not trying to make it look like a picture perfect like on the side of the box when you buy it or on the website. I wanna see everything and I can interpret what's a fish, what's my line, what's not and I can filter out the rest. So with the proper settings, you can get this right here. I don't know what it is exactly that they dropped down, but it's some sort of jig and it's dropping down right onto some active fish right here. You can see swimming around, going down on the bottom, then a fish kind of comes up, goes up again, comes down. So they dropped it pretty much right on their head. And we'll get onto the water here and show you some real examples of my unit set up and then I'll do some idling around. First thing you're gonna notice is this is the Rance HDS Carbon 12, but that doesn't really matter. All the brands are really similar. They pretty much have the exact same things. They're just called a different name or, or laid out a little bit different. So. This is gonna be kind of general, but you're gonna see you know, how to adjust it specifically in the Lowrance menu. But like I said, Humminbird or Garmin would be very, very similar to this. So first thing we're gonna start with here is your range. Uh, this is just on auto, but you know you can set it to whatever depth you want. So you know, auto usually works the best, but you know if you know you're gonna be looking for something specifically in 25 feet, then set your range like 10 feet past. The next step is your frequency. So I have 200 kilohertz, 83 kilohertz, and high and medium chirp. 
your chirp is like I said it's a faster ping speed so you have just like the fastest most detail and then medium chirp is a little bit less detail than your high chirp and then your 200 and your 83 kilohertz now this is where you're going to get a little bit more definition or you're going to get a little bit you know of a tighter cone with 200 kilohertz versus 83 remember 200 kilohertz is a third of the depth so let's just pretend we're in 45 feet of water instead of 32 feet of water and that would mean with 200 kilohertz our diameter of our cone you know that's that we're actually scanning seeing on the bottom would be 15 feet where if you go to 83 kilohertz you're not going to get as much detail but you're going to get a larger area it's going to be equal to the depth so if we're in 45 feet of water you're going to have 45 feet of, of area that you're scanning so generally you know if you're idling around in a little bit deeper water uh, 83 kilohertz is fine I usually kind of end up keeping it on either 200 kilohertz or high chirp one of the two uh, works the best for me just because I'm not usually utilizing 2d sonar by itself just idling around next up is sensitivity so Lowrance has you have your auto plus one you can do auto plus two you can just do regular auto you can do negatives or you can click off of the auto like down here and you just get your regular old sensitivity uh, and adjust it on the fly like that I prefer to run it on auto usually like auto plus two works pretty good you can see as I adjust the sensitivity you're gonna get more things showing up on the screen you're gonna get more clutter there is you know the 2d sonar will pick up just algae in the water it's just it's gonna pick up anything in the water so I usually run it about plus two and you can see if you dial this you know down you can really clean up the screen but you're gonna miss more except for sizable fish it depends what you want I prefer to see a little bit more and I can kind of sort through the clutter and figure out you know what's a fish or a rock or a stump or anything like that next up is your color line other brands uh like humber are going to call this contrast it's all the same thing though it's like i said it's just different words so if you you know lower this you're gonna pretty much lose a lot of your color uh if you go to different palettes it may look a little bit different we'll get to that though in a minute i normally run mine upper 70s gets pretty good okay so if we go into the advanced here you're gonna get noise rejection, which is just overall, if you have clutter in your screen, if you're getting like interference or anything of any sort, that's what you're gonna see this on. So I normally run mine on low. If you run it on high, you're gonna get like the cleanest picture, but you're also gonna lose out on you know possible detail. Surface clarity, uh, if you look here at the top, you have like this bar. So if I turn the surface clarity off, I'm gonna get a lot more like interference at the top. I usually run mine either low or medium. It just kind of clears up that top part of the screen. Then you have your scroll speed. So 2D sonar over here is your newest data. Over here is your oldest. So if you're driving over something, this is what you're looking at right here. Uh, what's underneath you at the time. This is all in the history. So scroll speed, uh, if you're just idling, I keep it on normal. But let's say I'm drop shotting. Say this unit's at the front and I'm wanting to watch my bait go down. I want this scroll speed higher. So the information is refreshing at a faster rate but for general purposes I normally just leave that on normal then you have ping speed this is the actual ping speed of your transducer I don't know if Humminbird and Garmin have this feature I'm trying to remember what Humminbird called it if they did but I can't think of it off the top of my head right now you can slow it down or you can speed it up to get the most detail possible so again if I'm drop shotting I'm gonna turn this all the way up so I can get the best detail that's pretty well the gist of that and then we'll go into more options here just to get to your palette so just your colors you can use whatever color you want pick something that you like that uh, you know it works well with your eyes it works well in all different type of conditions your daylight if it's dark whatever but this is the default color palette this is also the default color palette i believe on humminbird i'm not 100 percent sure on garmin but the reason this color palette is pretty nice is because if you look down here on the bottom you can tell how hard the bottom is you can see that this is a little bit of a softer mix like a mud not not a really really hard bottom if you go over straight rock this is going to turn bright yellow and it's going to be a lot thicker and you're going to know you're on very hard bottom but i tend to use palette number 13. i like this one a lot because when we go up north uh, we are drop shotting a lot i i prefer this because the smallmouth really hug the bottom and uh, you can see them just barely blip up because uh, you have different colors that indicate the hardness and this specific one green is the hardest you can kind of see a little bit here there's no green in there but it goes green then it goes like orangish red and then it goes to bluish purple would be your softest and if you go to this color palette here number one 
yellow is your hardest and it kind of fades down into the purple. So I prefer number 13 just because it differentiates from the bottom a little bit. All right, we're gonna do a little idling here past the docks. We're gonna see if we can find some brush piles or some fish or something to try to show you exactly what everything looks like on 2D sonar and how to interpret it. So you can see here, just a little uh, drop off from uh, basically a mirror of this comes from down and just a little ledge it drops off into the creek channel here so that's pretty self-explanatory let's see if we can run over some brush piles or find some fish here here comes some suspended fish here these are probably crappie just based on uh, kind of how they're stacked up and there's a little bit on this lip coming up and some more suspended fish. So the biggest thing with, and there's a brush pile coming up, and there's right on that lip is a brush pile. So the biggest thing with 2D sonar is you can't really be definitive what it is all the time. You know, you can't tell, okay, is that a tree? Is that a brush pile? Um, you know, is that a piece of a dock sticking up? A piece of steel? You know, you don't really know. You can't be definitive. So. What I'll get to in a later video is utilizing this with down imaging to really figure out what's going on. Because 2D sonar, you're not going to miss anything if it's in your cone. It's really going to pop. You're not going to have to strain to see it. You know, things show up really easy. Like here it looks like, this looks like it's maybe a little bit of a brush pile, but it's probably a lot of crappie stacked up around it, if I had to guess. It's about the time this crappie are really pushing up, so you're getting a lot of those. So here we go, coming back out. Another little lip. You see some fish down here just hanging out, deep, suspended, a little bit off the bottom. This is what's nice, uh, like I said, when we're smallmouth fishing. If a fish just raises up just a little bit, you're going to see that. It looks like a little ball of shad, a little bait ball with some other fish beneath it feeding on them. So that's kind of what a uh, school of shad looks like on your 2D. Usually it's going to be very dense, so you're going to get that green ball in there. Here looks like another big school of crappie. Uh, I'm only guessing that just because they're suspended out here, they're kind of near the shad, and they're stacked very vertical. The crappie tend to stack like this, where bass tend to go long way. Uh, and there's also, there was rock down there, this thing. Put this back here, here we go. You can see there's a, either a rock or a big block maybe. A lot of times they have these big blocks that hold these, these docks up and that is kind of what that looks like it could be. So moving on here a little bit more, I'm gonna try and find some fish and just stop the boat over top of it. I guess I could go mark these. I will mark these as fish. And I will turn around and I'll show you what you're looking at. Now this is where you're driving over them, so you're gonna get that, you know, the little arch. You're gonna have the arch effect like I showed in the little picture earlier. You know, you have your, your fish is stationary, you're driving over it, it's going to draw that arch based on your cone angles. Now I'll go over top of them with the trolling motor and show you. All right, so here we are at my front unit. Now here's the waypoint I marked in those fish. Now here's what you're looking at, and this kind of looks like little spaghetti noodles. So this is just us basically sitting still. We're drifting forward just a little bit. But moral of the story, these are all crappie, and I will zoom out actually this for you so moral of the story is these are fish that are just directly beneath the boat and if you're not moving and they're just kind of swimming beneath you you're just going to get all these lines because your your cone is just stationary and they're swimming through it you know all different directions and it's going to look like spaghetti noodles and you like this is just a fish moving um a couple other fish with it probably you can see it's kind of swimming down and this is another thing where you can drop your baits and stuff in this 2D sonar cone, you can actually watch your your bait fall down. It's gonna kind of look like lines like this going down. But that's kind of what it's looking like when you're just stationary. So you're, you know, if you're just sitting in a spot and you start to see all these lines all over the place like this, and it just looks like I call it spaghetti noodles. Uh, you know, that means you're sitting right over top of some fish, and that's that's always good. I always get excited when I see that, especially when we're fishing for big smallmouth and you're just sitting on a spot and you start to see these little lines kind of just pop up just a little bit off the bottom you know you're on a good spot so there's definitely a good dense school of crappie um you can kind of see them on live scope just a little bit here as it's turning but you can see they're right beneath us zero feet we'll get into this at a later date but that's what it looks like on 2d sonar so another thing i want to talk about the sensitivity is using it to find the thermocline in the summertime you can start to bump up your sensitivity uh, right now there's not going to be a thermocline the water is only 
if I don't have it turned on here, it's only about 60 degrees. But in the summertime, it's kind of going to look like this, where it's, it's cluttered at the top, but it's going to be backwards, where instead of being cluttered at the top, which it still will be, but you're looking for the same kind of definition where it's cluttered to nothing, but you're going to be looking at it from the bottom. So say you're turning your sensitivity up, you know, it's July, and you get it up and you might notice a line kind of starting around 15 or 20 feet, depending on the lake, you know, water clarity, all sorts of things. Uh, current definitely depends what the thermal is gonna be, but you can just use the sensitivity and bump it up to kind of figure out where that's at. And then you're gonna know, okay, those fish are gonna be hanging around that mark if you're fishing offshore or whatever. That's just another little tip of 2D sonar to help you out. So 2D sonar is still important. I still use it. Uh, it definitely has its place. You know, you got all this other new technology, live scope, down imaging, all that. But 2D sonar, you know, it's still really good. You're gonna pick up everything with it. You just gotta be able to interpret it a little bit and you can use some other things like down imaging or live scope in addition to it and really get dialed into what you're looking at.